lighting up neon bulbs and vacuum tubes. And we would ask you please to stay seated and um, if we have the opportunity later we can have small groups around the device and you can experience it and the shock. But so that everyone can see, please. We have plans available for uh, the apparatus if you wish to build it and perform it yourself so contact us afterwards. And now Walter's going to describe the apparatus and give you an idea of what to look for, what you should expect to see. Okay, we have to change this thing over here, okay? Okay. I've made up a little poster here, so which explains the field which surrounds this uh, water thread as it comes down. The idea of the water thread experiment is to show that we can discharge the water's electrical potential by pressurizing it and forcing it through very fine nozzles at a speed which the water attempts to slow down. The electrical potential is drawn off inductively by the two copper coils. They are actually the collectors of the charge emanating from the water stream. There is a copper plate in each of the containers connected to the opposite container. So on this poster here, we're trying to show the stream of the water and its uh, electrical field around. This is the uh, collector here, the spiral collector over there and uh, this up here is the nozzle and this is the water stream as it comes down and splits up. Uh, with uh, comparatively minimum velocity the water runs into uh, uh, those containers there. Uh, the small water particles from the split up beam move in tracks and curves of the field around the stream. Move most of the water continues towards the catch basin but tries to avoid it by spreading out as much as possible by forming a wet ring of one of two of around two meters in diameter on the bottom. Other particles reverse that direction and actually move upwards by being drawn into the structure of the field. A few drops are trapped by the field and move around the electric wires in spiral paths. Some move clockwise, some move counterclockwise, some move upwards, some move downwards. Some water drops even climb above the spray nozzle there, moving in a spiral fashion around the nozzle to be caught either by the water stream or to settle down on the nozzle itself. Uh, an electroscope hooked up to either collectors immediately shows potential, which can be in the excess of 20,000 volts, depending on your water source and how many chemicals or detergents would really kill the effect. Uh, in small amount, yeah, uh, detergents are ex uh, they just uh, offset this whole thing, and you have no indication whatsoever. But uh, I think we can. Uh, uh, actually start preparing and uh, show you how this will work. Have we got those uh, posters that are taped up by any chance? No, we have one. Huh? Okay. Okay. And take this along? Guess so, huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, now first of all we have to see how dark we can get it in here because the darker it is, the better we see that effect. And uh, I'm going to just for the experiment first, uh, let it start running. As you can see, they're very fine nozzles. And uh, get in the foil. Pardon? Get in the foil. Yeah. 
Now, uh, just to begin with, before we put the light out, uh, you will notice when I touch this uh, collector here, I get shocked, and uh, you will see a difference in the stream because I short circuited it now. And when I release it, you will see the stream splits up much more, uh, releasing the uh, electrical potential. You have a, a buildup of potential along the stream here. It's inductively taken off as it's called the rip zone, where it's taking off and then conducted into those wires and uh, led to the opposite uh, container. So. Uh, it is one way to show 100% all the electrical potential in the world. Now, can we turn off the light for a moment? And then, uh, as much as possible, of course, this one here, which is very important. And maybe we have to turn off that TV tube where it says uh, off. Uh, there's still light in the center there, and we have to close that door. That door needs to be closed over there. There's too much light coming in because you cannot see this effect uh, and depending on the water uh, uh, you can recognize a little yeah, the door cannot be closed more huh? it's really now a way of having additional light I think you can start seeing it, the tube lighting up just a little bit now in my hand the way that's holding over the other one I don't know if you can see it from the back there but uh, I wish we could uh, close that door. That would really be of help. Anyhow, I, I'm holding the, uh, the neon bulb right into the uh, stream. Well, as long as that is. Maybe somebody can stand in front of it too, so that will help. Yeah, okay. I don't know, can you see this uh, light flickering in that tube? It's either you read it or I have to do it uh -huh, for now. And uh, we also have uh, evacuated tubes, which you will see a very faint glimmer in it. And uh, I don't know, can you see it, recognize it, at least in the front there? And, uh, and uh, I'm holding it closer to that rip zone now, and you will see it, it lights up more. And uh, or now I'm holding it directly under the uh, under the collector, and you can see where it's connected up, there's more a discharge going to my tube than... Uh, now, this is a bot here, and uh, you can see it's much stronger. And uh, uh, it's contrary to all electrostatic experiments, uh, the more you have it in the water, uh, the more pickup you have. Uh, whereas in an electrostatic experiment, you will not... Uh, there, it's now coming better. Uh, can you maybe try usual on that side above the rip zone maybe too and uh, see if we can have uh, maybe well, yeah, see, it lights up better and if you hold it put it up like a I don't know, the inside of the first thing here and this side goes in there now we are, we are, we are approximately uh, looking at uh, maybe 10,000 volts I would say, depending how much the water is polluted and uh, how much it has been pressurized. Uh, we're doing the opposite of what uh, Schauberger uh, in, intended to do with all water. You have to uh, centripetally move it. We are pressurizing it and we're moving it, so to speak, centripetally, and this is why we have this discharge coming out of the, uh, uh, from the water. Like uh, when you move pipes, uh, a water through pipes, through uh, pipes which are on the ground in water systems. Uh, this electricity, like this one here, is conducted into the earth. This is, uh, so to speak, the life force, and this is what you need for all biological systems uh, in order to maintain the sy uh, your, your system. So when you make water, you uh, have to make sure it will load up with the potential and it's highly charged. Uh, before you drink it, but a uh, uh, hundred years ago, you could have that in the uh, uh, up in the mountains and the uh, mountain spring. Maybe it's still available, hardly. But we, I think, we have forgotten what really good water is. Uh, I'm too close. Okay. All right. Fine. Uh, so uh, basically, that is the experiment, and uh, we try those tubes here too, but. Uh, they light up, see, even 
the, the surrounding also charges up. As you can see, the field sometimes goes really far out, and, or when you leave it, see, when I put it down like this, and uh, when you're in the laboratory, all metal objects really charge up, and uh, to the extent it really gets sap at times. Uh, no, that's the tube. Okay, now this is a an evacuated tube, and there's nothing in it except uh, just a, a few air molecules, I guess. Uh, uh, let me see here now if it does anything at all. Uh, if, if we wouldn't have this light effect from that door, then uh, sometimes you can see a very bluish light, and uh, depending on the water. Oops, let, let me hook it under here. With a neon bulb, you have a gas and it excites easier than uh, with just an uh, evacuated fuel. No, I guess not. And the water, I guess, is just not that potent. We used to have workshops uh, all over the United States, and it was interesting to notice in different cities and uh, what the water was like. And uh, the best one we found was in uh, Hawaii, where they have a real good water source and the least unpolluted. And uh, those bulbs really lit up with a bluish light over there. So, uh, the, the field? Oh, yeah. And now, uh, we're going to put some uh, light stream onto the field. And uh, so you may see, you may see, you see that spray around. And uh, when you really watch it, let me uh, maybe do it this way, not the shine. And you will see the uh, particles returning upwards. They're actually levitating upwards. I can see it from here now when I light up against the stream. And uh, like it is shown on the, uh, on, on the poster, uh, which I showed earlier, you will see those particles coming up and trying to return uh, to the nozzle. Now, maybe from down here, uh, if you show. I don't know if you uh, can really see it. Let me know if you do. Uh, uh, can you see how the, uh, all the particles also move, not just straight up, they move spirally? Yeah, and, and way up on top there, uh, I can see them really curling past by the uh, uh, collector. And uh, you see, when you look at those drops at the collector underneath, the uh, they accumulate there by the particles coming up against it and actually uh, 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 levitating up there. So uh, the water becomes in its charge, or oh, pardon me, in its discharge, it, it wants to return to its source, so to speak, uh, by charging up as it flows down because it has free path of flow. And that is centripetal, more than centrifugal. And uh, that will... Uh, make this a levitating effect. In other words, when you uh, have water contained in flow pipes and you really have high velocity and centripetal motion, then you, of course the effect increases almost indefinitely and you can have power systems and uh, 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 levitating effect like in a, on a larger scale. And as Schauberger explained, uh, you have, for instance, one liter of water and if you, uh, can, if you are able to charge it up and uh, bring it up to a high, a high charge, then uh, you will be able to lift with one kilogram of water a thousand kilograms into space just by levitation. And the properties of the water uh, would increase uh, considerable. So anyhow, that's the basic idea. I think we have to move on because there's uh, a lot of things to be said yet. And uh, I hope you've seen some of those effects here, especially, I can see it here from that lamp easy, but uh, I don't know how you've been able to see it. Uh, see the water way out here, the field? Yeah, and if you would, uh, and you can see all those particles curling uh, around, and, and uh, when, you, when you really look and uh, observe it for a while, it takes